I want to try to speed up a little bit because I want to show you something the Apostle Paul says. Colossians chapter 1, I think everybody knows this passage. I want to start in verse 24. Colossians 1, 24. I now rejoice in my sufferings for you. I fill up in my flesh what is lacking in the afflictions of Christ for the sake of his body, which is the church. 25. Of which I became a minister according to the stewardship from God. Oh, oh Greek right there. Is of which I became a minister according to the dispensation from God. It's what God has dispensed to me. Dispensation really means what's been dispensed, what's been put out for me. Paul says, I am a minister according to a dispensation given to me to fulfill the word of God. The mystery which has been hidden from ages and from generations and now has been revealed to a saint's time out right there. Remember what Simon or remember what Judas, not Iscariot, asked? What Judas, not Iscariot, asked? Lord, how's the world going to be able, not going to be able to see you, but we're going to be able to see you? Good question, Judas, not Iscariot. And I think that's what Jesus called him to. <laughs> right? <laughs> Good question, Judas, not Iscariot. The mystery which has been... This is Paul. Now, Paul's years later, but Paul grabs that thought, that same motif Jesus is working with. The mystery which has been hidden from ages and from generations, but now has been revealed to the saints. This is going to be Judas, not Iscariot's answer, is that Jesus said to Judas, if you love the Father, the Father loves you, me and Daddy are going to move inside your mansion. We're going to build our mansion in you. You're not going to, we're not going to build a mansion over there, then come get you and take you over to our mansion. We're going to build mansions, all right, but it's going to be inside of your heart, inside of your life. We're going to take up residence in your marriage. We're going to take up residence in you. We're going to take up residence in your mind. And the more you renew your mind to that truth, the more we'll have a reality in your life. If you don't renew your mind to that truth, then you're going to run around all the time thinking that we've just disappeared and we don't love you anymore. What was the role of the Holy Spirit in the life of the believer? What did Jesus say? When the Holy Ghost comes, he will convict the world of sin, of righteousness, of judgment. Righteousness. Because I go to my Father and you see me no more. Why does he say that? You're going to need convinced that just because I disappeared, I'm not gone. And you're going to need the Holy Ghost inside of you to convince you of that. And if I didn't put the Holy Ghost inside of you, you'd feel like that since you couldn't see me, I don't exist. This is why if people don't have an identity of the Holy Spirit, they can't see Jesus. They think he's way over in the glory land. And that someday he'll come and do what he needs to do. And the reality is, is if we just allow the Holy Spirit to do what he wants to do, he's already in there doing the work. But now it's been revealed to his saints, 27. To them God willed to make known what are the riches of the glory of this mystery among Gentiles. Congratulations, Hogansville, Georgia. You are in this verse. Gentiles, non-Jews, strangers. Which is what? Christ in you the hope of glory. So Paul saw the same thing and said the mystery that had never been revealed is now being revealed in Gentiles. Why is it being revealed in Gentiles? Because Paul says we can't believe it. But the Holy Ghost even moved inside of them. They don't have Moses. They don't kill lambs. They don't have the law. They don't have Jerusalem. Some of them are Romans. They're Greeks. They're Italians. Jesus moved in. Peter couldn't believe it. He goes to the house of Cornelius, knocks on the door. The Italian, Cornelius, is a Gentile, opens the door, invites Peter in. Peter preaches Jesus. Everybody starts speaking in tongues and receives the Holy Ghost. And Peter scratches his head and says, this isn't possible. You guys don't have the law of Moses. How is it that you have the Holy Ghost? And the church has to take a slow turn. Really slow. Half the book of Acts is the church trying to figure out that everybody belongs. So don't get impatient now if everybody hasn't figured out that everybody belongs. It's a slow turn of revelation for some of us. For some people, it's a slow turn of revelation. Realize that we all belong in his family. That we all are as important as the other. That there's an issue that is Christ in us, the hope of glory. This is how Paul sees it. That it's Christ in you, the hope of glory. It's a who, not a what. The mystery's not a what. The mystery's a who. Christ in you. The hope of glory. Sneak over to 2, chapter 2, verse 8, same book. I'm trying to bring it to a close. Chapter 2, verse 8. As you, I'm sorry, verse 6. As you therefore, let's start in 6, we're heading to 8. As you therefore have received Jesus Christ the Lord, so walk in him. How did you receive him? By faith. Could you see him in the natural when you received him? 
No, this is what Paul's saying. You received him, you couldn't see him in the natural. You received him, you're a bunch of Gentiles. It's a mystery how you can even get him. That's Christ in you, the hope of glory. He says, but you didn't know him, you didn't see him, you didn't even believe the law, and yet you by faith accepted Christ. That's how I want you to keep walking in him. So walk the way you received. You know, we all came in by grace. Amazing grace worked on most of us, right? That, even that song worked on most of us. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound saved a wretch like me. I once was like, we, we heard that and we got this conviction of believing on Christ. And we went down an aisle and we accepted Jesus. It's a beautiful moment. And then we got up and we went back to our seat and they dismissed service. And we went next week because we're so excited. We're going to tell everybody about the salvation that we received. And we get hammered with law and do and do and don't and perform. And we get to the end of the service and they go, okay, if you haven't accepted Jesus, we're going to sing Amazing Grace because grace is for you. And I remember standing in the crowd going, man, I'd like to rewind the clock, go back to last week when grace was for me. Because I got to where I thought grace is for sinners. Grace isn't for saints. Saints going to do stuff. Paul said the way you received him, that's the way you ought to walk in him. So if you work to get him, here's your disclaimer. If you work to get him, then I'm going to tell you, you better work to keep him. That's what Paul said. If you worked your way into salvation, you need to work your way staying saved. But if you received him by his grace through faith, that's how we ought to be walking in him.